Hello and welcome to the Python tutorial series. My name is Steve and today we're going to be working on project number two. Up until this point we've uh, completed 15 lessons and you know we've come a long way from using Python as a basic calculator. Uh, you should have enough information and knowledge about programming to write uh, a bigger game or a game that's a little bit more intricate than a simple guess the number game and it's a program that I've had a lot of fun with and students in my class have had a lot of fun with and it allows you to use a little bit of creativity. Now the idea for In the Realm of the Dragon came from a book that I purchased years ago called Invent Your Own Computer Games with Python and it's a it's a book by Al Swigert it's a an open source book, so it's freely available on the internet, and you're welcome to look at it. Uh, you can also purchase it from Amazon.com and get a printed copy for yourself. I thought the book was very helpful. It was a little bit light on explanations, and some of the concepts were difficult for me to follow. But overall, I thought it was a pretty good book for giving me ideas and introducing me to the language of Python. Um, we'll take a quick diversion here. If we head over to Google... Uh, just do a search for Invent Your Own Computer Games with Python, and you'll see the first website that comes up is inventwithpython.com. And if you click on that link, uh, Al Swigert has actually written three books, uh, Invent Your Own Computer Games with Python, which is more most closely to re related to what we're working on now, but also Make Your Own Games with Python and Pygame. We will eventually get to Pygame and make our own games that way, although it might be a little bit beyond what we're doing right now. And the Hacking Secret Ciphers with Python, I've never read that book, so I'm not really certain what it's about. But if you, uh, you can buy the, the book from Amazon, or you can click the read the book online for free, and this is a, a decent resource for people learning programs. And we're going to be basing this off Chapter 6, the Dragon Realm game. So if you want to take a look at that, you can see where the idea for this program came from. And it will also kind of cheat for you a little bit because the source code for a basic game is in that chapter as well. Though so I highly recommend you create your own source code because I find sometimes the programming in the book itself, it's good for ideas, but it's a little bit more complicated when you try and follow what the author is doing as opposed to just problem solving yourself and writing the code yourself. But that's where the idea for this particular program came from. Okay, so back to our project. Uh, what this project is going to do is challenge you to develop and implement your own functions. You're going to have a main program that runs in a loop and allows the user to play the games as many times as they want. Uh, you're going to use some random number generation so that you can randomize the game a little bit and make it different each time people play. And we'll be using the time.sleep function that we learned about in Lesson 15 to add some pauses and suspense and flow control to your game. Now, the story of the In the Realm of the Dragon game is this. You have a character and he's in a land full of dragons. I did not come up with this idea. This was from the book. So, your character is in a land full of dragons, and as he searches the land, he finds a mountain that has two caves. In the first cave, there's a friendly dragon that will give the adventurer all the gold that they want. And in the second cave, there's a greedy dragon that will devour the adventurer and kill him. And the adventurer must choose a cave. Uh, in this basic version of the game, you can't choose not to uh, select the cave. You can't choose to back up. Um, and there's not a lot of background to it, but that's the idea. So the basic game rules is this. When the game starts, the game should ask the user for the name of their adventurer and store that in a variable. The game will print out a little bit of an introduction so that the adventurer or the, the game player knows exactly what's going on. So you have a little bit of an introduction, explain the purpose of the game. The players will then be ch prompted to choose one of two caves through the input function. The game should then select a, use a randomized function to determine what is the good cave and what is the bad cave. The easiest way to do this is to have the user select cave number one or two and then randomly generate a number one or two to represent the winning cave. And then if the user 
if it randomly generates one and the user selected two, then the user loses. Now I understand that this game is completely random. There's no way to guarantee a win or to guarantee that there's a strategy that can result in successfully completing the game. You know, it is completely based on randomization, but we can fix that in a bit. Uh, the game will then print out the results to the adventurer. To make the game more sus suspenseful, you should use the time.sleep command to put some pauses so the user doesn't immediately know whether they've won or lost. Uh, the game should then ask the player if they'd like to play again, and if the player selects yes, the game will run again. Uh, you should use your own user-defined functions to call important events. Uh, I think you could have a function that prints the introduction. You could have a function that randomly selects a winning cave. You could write a function that will call for the user to choose a cave. Uh, and then build the checks into your code so that the player can't make invalid choices. If I ask you to select cave one or two and you select four, the program should say four is an invalid selection and have the user enter information again. So that's the In the Realm of the Dra Dragon program outline. So up on the screen here, you just have a checklist of the things that uh, a successful program will have in it, and it uses all the same concepts that we've talked about in Lessons 1 through 15. You're going to have print statements, input functions, you're going to have variables storing important information, you're going to use the string and integer function to convert data back and forth for comparison. If you create a random number, that's going to be an integer, where if you have the user input something, that's going to be a string, so you'll have to convert that back and forth. You're going to use if statements to check the correct cave. You're going to use while statements to make the program run in a continual loop. You're going to have to import random so that you can create random numbers. You're going to have to import time so that you can control the flow of the execution of the program with the time.sleep function. And you're going to have your own user-defined functions that are implemented. Now, some of the advanced project features that I think are a little bit fun. I mean, if you if you take this program as just a, I'm going to do exactly you know the minimum to get by you can do that and you'll probably learn something but it's more fun to make it personal to you you know add some features to the program that maybe no one else has ever added some of the ideas that I came up with when I was thinking of this project was creating a, a chain of user selected events instead of just having a random number one or two and picking a cave on the left or a cave on the right have the user discover something in the cave that requires an additional choice, almost like a choose-your-own-adventure game. If you think about it, if you choose a left cave or a right cave and then have two choices based on the results of that, you'd have four possible endings for your game instead of just two, making it a little bit more interesting, and there's no limit to how many choices you could have the user make. Uh, you could give the adventure a chance to fight the, the dragon using a random number to decide whether or not the dragon is slain or the adventurer loses. You don't necessarily need just one of two options. You could create a random number between one and five, each with their own result, making instead of a 50-50 sh shot of a response coming up, you'd have a 20% chance of a response coming up. You could give additional commands to the player, such as describing maybe a sword that's laying on the ground and allowing the user to pick up the sword before going in the cave. You could give the user the option to run away and have an ending based on running away. You could create a, a variable to see if the user has a sword in their inventory or not. You could set a variable sword to false, and when they pick up the sword, have that variable set to true. And then when the user goes to fight the dragon, if the sword variable is set to true, they have a better chance of slaying the dragon. You could keep some sort of score, whereas every time the user gets a victory, they get 100 points, and it keeps track of how many points they have in a playthrough. You could have the user press their luck, where if they want to play again, they get to hold on to their gold and accumulate more, but if they lose, they lose everything. Or even some kind of random gold, jewel, and silver generator, where after the player wins, they get a random amount of gold, jewels, and silver reported to them instead of a fixed amount. These are all ideas that could really make your program a little bit more interesting. So let's take a look at the program as it's executing. So this first example will just be the the base code. And in fact, this is directly out of the Invent Your Own Computer Games with Python book. 
When I execute this program here, you can see you're in a land full of dragons. In front of you are uh, you see two caves. In one, the dragon is friendly. In the other, the dragon is greedy and hungry. What cave will you go into? I'm going to choose cave number two. You approach the cave. It is dark and spooky. A large dragon jumps out in front of you. And he gobbled me down in one bite, and I died. So, not too successful on that game. So let's play again and see if we can win. And I get the introduction again. I'm in a land full of dragons. Which cave will you go into? I'm going to choose cave number two again. Approach the cave. It's dark. A dragon jumps out. And gives me his treasure. So you can see, even though I selected cave two both times, because it's randomly generated, I can't really tell whether I'm going to win or lose, and that's what those pauses are for. Do I want to play again? No, I most certainly do not. And that is the basic in the realm of the dragon game. But that right there, that can be a little bit boring. I mean, that might be a good challenge to get your feet wet, but once you have this program running to your liking, you'll probably want to personalize it and make it a little bit more your own. So I spent about 25-30 minutes writing my own more advanced version of the Dragon Realm game. Now, of course, there's still a lot more I could add to it, a lot more fun I could have with it. But let's go ahead and run the more advanced version of the Dragon well Realm project. You see, the first thing that I did was I wanted a better introduction. So I did a search for ASCII art on Google. And I found a site called Chris.com that was just fantastic. It had all kinds of cool ASCII art, and of course there were some ASCII art dragons. And because we haven't gotten to graphics yet, uh, ASCII art is a good way to add some flair to your programs. So I added this uh, dragon with, with uh, print statements, just copied and pasted from Chris.com. And I'm being prompted you know, to press enter to begin. So I press enter, and it says enter the name of your adventurer. My guy is going to be named Steve. This is the brave adventurer Steve. has been on a great quest through dangerous lands. He finds a strange cave with familiar markings. It's the same markings that are on his map. He starts to search the cave. He grows more excited. I couldn't decide what I wanted my end result to be. So maybe sword, money, magic wand, whatever it is he's looking for, he's excited because he's about to find it. And if the legend is true, only a warrior pure of heart will be allowed to pass by the vicious dragon that dwells within the cave. And now the user is going to come up on their choice. There's a fork in the cave, and you can go either left or right. So I'm going to choose to go right by selecting number two. But Steve searches for hours. It seems as though the search is becoming hopeless. Finally, Steve finds himself in a large corridor, and through the darkness he makes out the shape of a huge dragon. So I've already determined that I've made the correct choice here, because the other option is to be lost in the cave forever, and the game is over. So I found a dragon, and it says press enter to continue. So I've redrawn my dragon, that is what the user is looking at right there, press enter to continue. Steve approaches the dragon, who rears back as he notices the adventurer. The dragon seems to be sensing the adventurer's intentions. Finally, the dragon makes a move. The dragon senses the adventurer does not have the best of intentions. And with a loud screech, the dragon wheels around, facing the adventurer, and... Oh, I died. No good, Steve falls dead almost instantly. Would you like to play again? Sure. So I selected the correct cave, but then I did not make my random roll to have the dragon let me pass. So when I want to play again, the brave adventurer Steve is questing again. I'm going to get back to the cave. I'm going to make my choice right, and hopefully this will be the incorrect choice. I search for hours. The search is becoming hopeless. Nope, I'm in the large corridor again. See the huge dragon. The dragon is displayed on the screen. And as I approach the dragon, he notices me. And hopefully, maybe we can win the game this time. Dragon is trying to sense my intentions. They're not good. And in fact, I got the death ending again. Now, both of those are randomly generated. So there's a 50-50 shot of getting the correct cave. And then there's a 50-50 shot of actually winning the game. Let's try this one more time. Hopefully, we'll get something a little bit different. 
program is running, and we get to our first choice, and I'm going to choose the right cave again. I'm searching for hours. Search is becoming hopeless. And after more searching, Steve realizes that he has become hopelessly lost inside the cave, never able to find his way out, and eventually dies of starvation. Game over. Do you want to play again? No, I don't. And the program exits. Now, of course, this is a, a fairly simple program, but you can add all kinds of stuff. Like I said, you can have the user find a shield and a sword and then try and slay the dragon. You can have it randomly generate the amount of treasure they get. There's all kinds of fun stuff you can do this with this. What I would suggest doing is writing the base program, making sure that you can create a simple adventure game where the user selects a left or a right and then either wins or loses. And once you have the 50-50 shot working correctly uh, with the appropriate messages, you can start to add all kinds of neat features. So I'm excited to see what you guys can come up with. Of course, I am here to help you out. If you have any questions or you need any assistance, your program isn't working correctly, or you're getting error messages, feel free to leave those questions in the comment section, and I will answer them as quickly as I can and help you get through this. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.